This is a uh, flip class video number five. The content comes from uh, chapter 6.4 in uh, textbook written by Smith, Vanus, and Abbott. The content is about phase equilibrium of one single component. So if we look into the change from liquid, if you heat it up until you get vaporization, at some certain point, there will be a phase equilibrium between two phases, liquid and vapor. Then it might change to complete, complete vaporization into pure vapor. All right. Now, if we look into the change in enthalpy of substance from liquid phase to vapor, at first, if you heat it up, then the enthalpy would change a bit the entropy would increase according to temperature. But once vaporization takes place, enthalpy of vapor is much, much higher than enthalpy of liquid. So there is a discontinuity of the function of enthalpy here for phase change. This is not quite desirable for calculation. It makes the whole function to be non-continuous. On the other hand, if we consider the energy of the change, you see that the change is not, is a continuous function. The change in liquid into vapor, the keep free energy increase continuously, even though we have phase change. So that's why keep free energy is very important variable for calculation of phase change. Now you look at the system where we have two phases liquid and vapor at equilibrium, at constant temperature and pressure. From the fundamental relation, dt equal to vdp minus sdt, if I write it down as uh, extensive properties, we can get ng, nv, and ns respectively. And then for this system, for this system where where the, const, the temperature and pressure are constants, so dp here and dt over there are constants. So, in, also, the system is closed system. The species does not escape from the system, so therefore the number of mole remains constant, n here is constant, and as a result, you get dt to be zero. So that means for the phase change from liquid to vapor, the keep free energy does not change at all. It also consistent why Earlier, we said that the function is continuous because for the phase change from liquid to vapor, dg becomes zero. It means that for phase change, keep free energy of liquid phase is equal to keep free energy of vapor phase for, mo for more like keep free energy. So for change in temperature or pressure in two phase system. So let's see, let's say we have the system here, two phases, and then we change either temperature or pressure. Then keep free energy would be changed because of the change in temperature or pressure. But the change in keep free energy on one side of the system would, re would be the same as the change in keep free energy of the other side. So dg of liquid phase would equal to dg in vapor. Then we use fundamental relation dt equal to minus sdt plus vdp written for liquid phase and vapor. We can get this relationship. Note that the temperature on the left hand side and temperature on the right hand side are the same, and so does the pressure. So we can rearrange the equation to get this part. The temperature and pressure will be written on the left hand side, and then you get entropy and volume on the right. The denominator is a difference in entropy from vapor to liquid. We can write it down as the change in entropy according to vaporization. The same thing applies for denominator. It would be delta V for vaporization. In this case, the pressure, whenever we have two phases for one component system, the vapor the pressure here is called vapor pressure or saturated pressure. 
So P here will be written as P sat. Then the process of phase change as constant temperature. Then we can write down the relationship according to the definition of give free energy, G equal to H minus TS. So delta G would equal to delta H minus delta TS. If the change is done as constant temperature, we can take T out of the delta here and write it down for vaporization process. So we will get this equation. Then we will know that delta T for vaporization is zero from what we derived earlier. So this one is zero. So we can rearrange the equation to get entropy of vaporization equal to this part. The change in enthalpy for vaporization here sometimes is also called latent heat of vaporization. So if we take this part, plug it in this equation, what we are going to have would be something like this. This is called Papillon equation. This is one of the important equations for the calculation of vapor pressure. Now from Papillon equation, if you look at the delta Delta V here is V of vapor subtracted by V of liquid. But molar vapor, molar volume of vapor is much, much greater than molar volume of liquid. So therefore, sometimes we can say that molar volume of liquid is negligibly small. Therefore, the delta V of vaporization is approximately the same as molar volume of the vapor side. So if we also Assume that the vapor is ideal gas because normally vap vaporization takes place at relatively low pressure. So it can be assumed to be ideal gas. So for ideal gas, we, we use ideal gas law and plug it in over here. And what we have from Capron equation will be something like this. Rearrange the equation, take P sat to be on the left hand side and take DT to the right. And if we assume that the delta H of vaporization is not function of temperature, we can change 1 over T squared dT to be differentiation of D of 1 over T. Same thing apply for dP over P to be written as D of the logarithm of P. This equation is sometimes called process Capron equation. It is applicable only when we can assume that latent heat of vaporization is not function of temperature or it is it does change slightly with temperature. If we rearrange the equation, cross the Capron equation to be this form, then sometimes according to experimental data, sometimes it is shown that equation like this is valid only at low pressure. But pressure, sometimes we experimental data and some somehow find a correlation. People have observed linear relationship if we plot the data in this form. The vapor pressure, logarithm of vapor pressure as a linear function of 1 over t. Or sometimes it is modified into this form. There's uh, parameters a, b, and c which are constant, but they are depending on species that you are interested in. Vapor pressure here would be inversely proportional to temperature. The higher the temperature, the higher the vapor pressure. This equation is called Uncle's equation, and it is a very important equation to be used for calculation of vapor pressure. And the data for parameters A, B, and C can be found in common thermodynamics textbook.